so i hope all of you are absolutely fine so in this video i'm actually going to show you how to deal with multi-dimensional arrays so inside typescript you often face problems in dealing with the types or annotating a multi-dimensional array we know that there is already type inference where we can use it to automatically detect types and the typescript automatically does that for us but instead of that if we are interested to learn how typescript does that inference automatically for those multi-dimensional complex arrays then we can follow a simple logic and the logic is always try to put the types of the outermost at first priority so i will show you how you can actually utilize this sentence and easily write the annotation types for a multi-dimensional array it doesn't matter it is or two types or two dimensional three dimensional four dimensional or a mixture of string numbers and all types of thing or uh, gibberish thing you can say so you can do all types of uh, multi-dimensional arrays or complex arrays typing so let's start so for we will start with a very easy example you the above two examples are just for demo purposes uh, so that you can actually see how complex the thing can be so let's start so we always know that when we actually define a normal array suppose uh, arr1 array1 and if we see something like this and put some number okay so what we'll actually do what will be the type of this array we can simply say that okay we can simply say it is a number but what type of uh, it is a number array that's why we will actually put this box so what this number actually indicates that in the array all the elements are number so what we if, if we actually include the string uh, a b and c so we can see that we are having a problem because each string is not allowed here right so we also want to allow string in this array so what can we do now what we will do is now we will say that hey you we go we have removed the number from here and now we will say that in this array okay there are not only uh, one type of element there are two types of element one is string or one is number so now we are saying that in this array so for to indicate inside we will use this first bracket so inside this array there are two types of thing one is string and one is number so that's why it is allowing us to put uh, the number and string at the same time inside our array what if we now actually include another nested array like this with some value like boolean okay true comma false so now we can see that we are having a, again one error message that we cannot include this because our type doesn't support it so now we will change our type in such a way that it starts to stop or support it so now we can see that inside our first array we have three types of thing one is string one is number and another one is another array so we have already string and number so we will just add our error type and the error type will be just nothing we will know that it is a boolean error type right it contains boolean so we will say that there is another error type and that error type contains what that error types contain nothing but boolean because we are having true comma false right now let's make it more complex okay so now we will say that inside this second array we have another array okay we or we have another value which is string so let's write hello here so now we can say that here is again one error because it is a boolean array the second array is a boolean array and we cannot put string here so what we will do is to put a string here we will we have to say that the second array can also have this string type data structure so what we will do is remove the boolean because we are now defining the type of this second array pinkish array so what we will do is just say the write the first bracket parenthesis, parenthesis and then say boolean and then what we will do is pipe it with string okay so we have we can see that we do not have any error now because we have already uh, we have said that the second array this pink color one uh, visual studio code is also helping us to understand this thing better with some colors so this pink color array the second array can have both the things boolean or string so for this second number string or sorry second number array we can say that it can have boolean or string 
And now if we do further the third level dimension, then we can keep another array here. Now we can say that it uh, will contain undefined, okay? Undefined and nothing else. And close this array. And I don't think I can put this uh, character undefined in this way. Oh, okay, we can put this uh, undefined here, but the problem is that our type is not supporting this. So what we will gonna do is now we have to make this supportable by changing our types. So now we will say that see you have boolean string and you have also an array. And this array is a third array, okay, the nested third array. We can see that this is the nested third array. And what is this type? Each type is undefined. So we will say that the third array has definitely the type undefined. And we can see that our error has gone. And we can see that it is a huge mesh, right? But it's okay, all right, because we are understanding things now, and it is better to understand complex things better by studying each step by step. So you can see that we have defined a very, very complex array here, and we have also defined its type accordingly, so that our types actually matches with the values, and we do not get any errors. So in this way, you can actually annotate complex arrays very easily. Just you have to consider the outer one at first, the outermost yellow array at first, and for that for that yellow array, you can see that the outermost yellow array is here. And for that yellow array, it contains what type of values? It contains three types of values. One is this string, one is this number, and another one is just this this array, okay? The spin color array. So this three value one, two, three. So we, if you go to the yellow array, we will see the same thing. One, two, three. Okay, one array type, one string type, and one number type. And now if you go inside the second array, we will see one boolean type, one string type, and one arrow type. So if we go to the second array, and inside the second array, that means this one. And we can see that a boolean type, a string type, and an arrow type, which has undefined, because it contains undefined as a value type. So in this way, you can actually write the type of complex array very easily. I hope this video was helpful. So if it was helpful, consider subscribing the channel and until that, stay well and I will close the video for now. Thank you for watching this video.